Hi, okay, just doing a quick uh, post-Christmas check-in video thing. I'm very pleased with putting out the ADHD checklist, so I really hope it helps um, adults with ADHD, especially women with ADHD. Um, with the late diagnosis and everything, I hope to change that someday, somehow, I don't know. Um, this year with the virus, Christmas was interesting. I have cut off most of my family members. Um, they have been very toxic and through therapy and reflection, I have realized that low contact may be good, but no contact is the best. So wait, here is just a small little ADHD rant about my education um, because I have my I ADHD group, which I put a link to. If you're Asian and you have ADHD and you want a mini support chat, like there's a link below. Um, but so I have you know, been trying to get back on academia because I feel like I like to learn. Um, and it took me uh, 13, 13 years to realize that there was no shame in learning. Um, and I learned different. I think learning that I learned different has actually changed the way I can accept how, you know, fast or slow I learn and that there is no right or wrong. Um, like, so, so that's really changed me. So I didn't get diagnosed or go to a special school for special ed. Um, this kind of saw me in primary school going to take the gifted programs, which would test kind of like Mensa for math and science. But, I was still like struggling in the main school where it was more like technical, finicky rules. Um, and these like bonus tests were more pattern recognition. Um, you know, like, you know, if, if, if square, square, square and square, 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 then what could the third square, square, square be? So things like that. And I, and I liked doing those. Like I enjoyed that. But I was struggling in main school. And my mom, you know, she was really proud of me to get into those things because she could, like, have a brag with her friends, which I think is super toxic. Like, your kids are not your, like, I don't know, your your accolades. Like, anyway, you can be proud of your kids, but don't use it as, like, a betting shit. I never liked it. Anyway, so then I did well in those, but I was, like, borderline, like, B and C, which was unacceptable, clearly, by my mom, um, for math. Um, and so if I was going to get shit for doing badly in school school, why would I have expended extra energy to go take more exams, like outside of school and have extra training and classes to do the extra exams to get into the so-called special, like special stream? Like would the exams stop because I was in the special stream? Would the pressure be less? No, it would be more. So in my eight-year-old head, I was like, Mm, 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 mm. Nine, nine, nine-year-old hit. I was like, mm, fuck that. So I decided to flunk out of everything, right? So this floundering continued along with trying to grasp the social stuff, which I now, you know, am in the process of being tested for autism, which makes a lot of sense. Um, and I went into secondary school. And what what was really disturbing was, was in secondary school, like there was math, right? There was math and there was core math and there was additional math which you could take or was good to take because you end up in a junior college and on top of the ridiculous amount of bullying and abuse I survived in uh, high school uh, secondary school high school same thing um, I was met with teachers who you know were not trained in special ed probably not paid enough and the word trauma informed hasn't even landed in 2020 so i guess like 10 years ago flying in the air like dust no one cared um so i was i was you know i was punished for being inquisitive asking why i, I was punished for not paying attention and blanking out in space um they used like microphones and stuff which made it too loud for me and overwhelmed my senses and i'm not like i would melt down quietly um i was picked out in auditoriums called stupid and useless and a waste of space and a waste of air and that I would amount to nothing by the heads of departments shamed in front of the whole school compared to my then very, very abusive boyfriend saying that I was the two, like one of the two of us, 
that would lead to our demise, that I was dragging him down, etc., etc. Again, of another side bit on how love ruins your life and how you should not date. You should just focus on studying. Mate. Anyway, so this saw me in math class. Um, you know, I started floundering it. Algebra. I started floundering when one over x to the power of minus one, right? It was, it was just set as is. So like the explanation was that is that just memorize it. But my brain does not work that way. So I was like, why does it, or does it work like that? And the response I got was, because it works like that. Memorize it. Are you stupid? Can you not memorize? Which, you know. Because of that, countless times, I could never grasp the stuff that happened in term one, which means I never really fully grasped anything and I dropped out of additional math. Really quickly, I walked out because I was sick and tired of being called stupid in the middle of a tirade. I just walked out and I dropped the subject. So, yeah. I was super traumatized from school. I was made to run laps around the science lab, being mocked um, on top of an eating disorder that, you know, was developed and untaken care of bullying complaints that were not you know properly assessed i was told to not take the final year of my exams at the o levels because i would bring the school aggregate down um for the sake of that glory i was told to not take the exam to spend another year in school repeating this shit that i started not going for because i was being tripped down the hallways and rinsed daily by people supposedly supposed to be educators of tomorrow. Anyway, um, so I did not retake the year. I, I refused. Uh, I took the exams. I fucking killed it. Um, and my teacher, my form teacher at that time, um, supposed brood mother of the class, checked my results three times because she could not believe her eyes and she said this can't be it no mel you couldn't have got this result also go to the back of the line because your hair is not perfectly black it's slightly open you're not supposed to dye your hair even though you're technically out of school um so all that kind of shook me a lot um and and i guess this this whole rant is i guess if you find similarities in your growing up or you were told that you were stupid for asking why you were not. Um, and it's also to say that I found a YouTube Kids channel called Math Antics. And this guy explains math concepts with oranges and apples and bananas really slowly with animation. And these were concepts that the hours and hours of trying to just blindly drill when I was 13, it never landed, or even younger, I guess the whole system was kind of like that. Um, in Chinese, I don't know if anyone took Chinese, but um, if you're watching, um, we had to copy the same word like a hundred times because we would learn it. That's how we would learn it. I learned nothing. I got hit by rulers and had like Chinese dictionaries chucked at me, but I learned nothing and I got those things done to me because I asked what the point of copying a word a hundred times was for because I was not learning anything and no one improved it they just got mad so anyway in seven minutes her algebra rule or like exponential explanation he taught me more than a whole life because the models were different they it was visual. It was it was slow. It was patient. And one of the things that really moved me was when he said, "It might be a lot to digest now." You know, I'm paraphrasing. But if you if you don't get it, you can take your time and you can replay the video. And that was the patience that was never afforded to me when I grew up. And I wish I had it. And I wish I got diagnosed. And I wish I went to special ed. But celebrity, right? So I hope to change that one day like if like you know pay our teachers more i don't know like come up with more 
like learning for more people, learning for diverse minds, you know, like repetition and copying and just hard, like memorizing might, might drill people in this like road mindset. Like if it works for you, then it's so great. But what about the outliers? What about the neurodiverse? And I am tired of reading messages or seeing people being told that they, that they could not not of any fault of their own, but because there were no provisions for them to learn the best way they could. So I'm embarking on this new academic journey where I do want to learn more about psychology and to do that, I need to get good at math and I want to study more about art and and just discovering this kid's channel and working through the simple barriers brought back all these memories. Um, that I spent a lot of time when I was younger getting very angry at, but now I'm more incensed that true change has not happened, albeit in the better um, organizations, I guess, like when you're in university, there are more accommodations for people with special needs, uh, and that's great. But it needs to start from a lot younger, amazing friend that I had the opportunity to stay with for a bit. And she teaches kids with, special needs, the neurodiverse, the autistics, the ADHDs, you know, the hyperactive. And and watching her teach or overhearing her teach, even online, and the amount of patience and time she took per child and allowing them to shut off and put on their headphones if they were overstimulated by the noise or the information. You know, like I guess change is happening in a small way and I can't and I can't wait for it to become you know, more more mainstream um, and better. So anyway, that was my little 15-minute rant about education. And I put the math link below. So we survived 2020. And I hope you feel less alone and more seen and that it's not too late to ever get back on anything. And there is no shame learning the way you need to learn. So take care. I will see you soon.